In this video, we're going to do a little cleanup of our application to get ourselves ready for our next couple of subjects. So I've talked about the carousel approach where we kind of take a one trip around the carousel and just get an overview. And then we take a second trip around the carousel and we look at things in more detail. And in my opinion, that's required when learning programming because there's kind of, it's kind of hard to find a good place to start. Everything assumes you already know something, so it's hard to jump on. Just like a carousel, there is no beginning or ending. As a result, in the first pass around, we might not do everything optimally so that we can demonstrate a few things by example. So in a previous video, we put in an example of some string arrays. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of that, just clean things up a little bit. And okay, next consideration, let's see, we were looking at a string literal here. Uh, I'm going to condense this back into one line again. That was just an example on how we can use strings. So uh, we can do like so. Okay, next thing, what you see is that we are prompting the user for some information about a vehicle. But the trick is, we are assuming only one vehicle. So we see here there's MPG. Well, what if I had a vehicle? And what if you had a vehicle? Then I'd, I'd have to do this all over again. I'd have to say int your MPG equals, and then uh, maybe we'll do another kind of prompt here or something like that. Or maybe I could just hard code it to 20 for the moment. Uh, same thing if we take a look at something like, let's see, we have miles per gallon. We have how far do you want to go? Uh, we also might have an odometer value. Each of these things we would have to duplicate each time we have a new car. If somebody else has a car, we'll have to do int someone else's. Oh, well, couldn't do it that way. MPG. So you see, this gets very inefficient after a while because we have to keep declaring new variables each time we have a new car. And not only do we have to do it for miles per gallon, but we'd have to do it for gallons of gas as well. So double your gallons of gas. Uh, and yeah, I could hard code that to a value like maybe eight. And then I could say double someone else's gallons of gas equals six. So you see, this is inefficient for several reasons. One, every time we need to add a new car, we have to declare a whole new set of variables. Secondly, we have to recompile because I'm actually changing the program itself, and surely there's a more flexible way to do that. And that's what we're about to get into. But first, this was just to demonstrate how we really shouldn't be declaring a brand new set of variables every time we have a brand new vehicle. So I'm gonna clean that up. Uh, also, I already purged a few things out of this file. Anytime you do a refactor, it's a really good idea uh, if you're deleting things to uh, first do a commit after you do some refactoring. Refactoring is when you look at your code and you find ways to make it better. So if you're deleting things, delete things and then do a commit. So I'll go ahead and do a commit here. Okay, start our refactoring. That way we have a brand new baseline for everything new that we add. That will make code reviewing much, much easier. Okay, now I've done the commit. Now I've done a little bit of cleanup. Now let's talk about how we can make this a bit more efficient without having to make new variables every time we have a new car. Well, driver and vehicle are two different classes and really should a, a driver should have the intelligence of a driver. It should know what a driver wants to do. A vehicle should know what a vehicle wants to do. So we want to make a fine line between these two classes. Now, we haven't gotten really deep into what classes are just yet, but we've covered them at an overview, but not in a detailed level. Not to worry, since we are doing a carousel approach, in this video, we're just going to take a look at how classes can help us from the scenario that I just had, where I had your gallons of gas, someone else's gallons of gas, Sharon's gallons of gas, Srini's Serene's gall gallons of gas, so on and so forth. How we can go from that dilemma to something a little bit more efficient by using classes. And our second trip around the carousel, we'll spend a whole lot more time looking at classes, uh, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation, what we tend to think of as the core parts of classes. That's not for this video, but we will cover it this semester. So nonetheless, let's take a look here. We now have a driver program, and we see we have a main method that's invoking prompt user. You know what? I don't think I even need this. I'm sorry. While I'm cleaning up, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this line as well. So we have a driver method that is invoking a prompt user method. And prompt user method is asking for gallons of gas and a distance. And then we have a computation going on here, particularly right here, where we're computing the gallons of gas that are consumed. 
Now, as a driver, you might kind of mentally do that and think, well, I need to drive to Columbus. That's going to be a, a, you know, maybe I need three gallons of gas for that. But really, it's the car that determines how many gallons of gas are consumed. So this computation that we have doesn't really belong here. It really belongs in our class called vehicle. So let's go to the class called vehicle and let's make a brand new method, public void go. Okay, and we're going to have this accept a parameter variable in distance, just like so, and open curly, close curly. Now let's say compute gallons consumed. Okay, and I'll say, uh, let's see, we have our parameter variable distance here. So gallons consumed is going to be the distance traveled. And then divided, remember the division is the slash that's on the question mark key in an American keyboard. Uh, uh, distance divided by miles per gallon. Notice a subtle difference here, and I'm not finished with this line yet, but notice I'm referring to a variable here called miles per gallon. The variable and driver is called MPG. So these things right now are not the same variable. We're going to have to find a way to take the value from MPG and driver and pass it over into vehicle. Don't worry, that time will come in just a moment. But I just want to point out that these are slightly different variables, even though we're going to try to take the value from driver MPG and pass it into vehicle miles per gallon. Okay, so distance divided by miles per gallon. We'll save that into a new variable called double gallons consumed, just like so. Okay, now we'll say subtract gallons consumed from gallons of gas. So we'll say uh, gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. Okay, just like so. Okay, and then we'll say increase the odometer. Oh gosh, look, we don't have an odometer. If a car is going to move, the odometer should increase, right? Uh, so we probably want to keep track of that. Notice we don't currently have a variable called odometer, but that's okay because it will give us a little refresher on how to make an attribute like this and also how to make these getter setter methods. So if we look towards the top, look at these variables that are declared right here and just ask yourself where they are declared. Are they declared within a class? Well, yes, here's the public class line. Are they declared within another method? No, here's a method called go. Here's a method called get gallons of gas. Here's a method called set gallons of gas. So this is declared in that area that we call class, but not method. In other words, these are a special kind of variable we can call attribute or instance field or even a member variable. Let me make one more and we're going to say private int odometer. I remember when I was a young lad, odometer would, would uh, in the U.S. would track down the tenths of a mile. Somebody asked me one time if that should be an int or a double data type when I was doing this lecture live. I said, you know, I don't remember. Do they still track by tenths of a mile? And I had to look on my car and realize they don't anymore. So we'll go ahead and keep that as an int, but use your own discretion on that one. Okay, increase the odometer. Now, do you see this line up here? Gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. I want to look at this before I look at the increase the odometer algorithm we're going to use. First of all, remember in programming, especially in Java, the equal sign, single equal sign doesn't mean equality. It doesn't mean that on the left equals that on the right. It means assignment. It means compute what you see on the right, take the result of that and assign it to the left. We could accomplish the same thing in Java by saying gallons of gas uh, minus equals gallons consumed. This line, line 22, is identical to line 21. Those two are very similar. I'll leave it like that, but for odometer, I am going to use that trick. So we'll simply, simply say odometer plus equals distance. So odometer equals odometer plus distance. Now one more thing. We, we know that the vehicle should have the logic to process what a vehicle is, including kind of like a dashboard. So why don't we make a method here and I'm going to call it to string. This is a common method in Java that follows a very simple syntax, public string to string, just like so. It kind of says, give me a string representation of this object. So I'll just kind of put like a little dashboard line. I'll say return and then we'll say gallons 
of gas, colon space. Uh, remember that we use the plus as the concatenation operator in Java, so plus, and then gallons of gas plus odometer plus odometer. And these are the most important things we're going to have. A little tidy up here. These are the most important things we're going to have a dashboard show. Gallons of gas, the current state, and also the uh, current state of the odometer. So I think we look pretty good there. So I will go ahead and save. Now I'm going to go back to driver. And in driver, we have to think about, well, gosh, we don't need all of this stuff anymore because we move that formula or that algorithm from driver over to vehicle. But we still have to think about how to call uh, that logic from driver or from vehicle and driver. Uh, this if test, I'm not going to worry about that either. Let me go ahead and clean that guy up as well. So I'm, I'm essentially gutting quite a bit of this, aren't I? Uh, but we're getting a lot closer. So one important thing to notice, notice that all of our prompts to the user still exist in this class called driver and do not exist in the class called vehicle. Vehicle is just a, what we call a POJO, a plain old Java object. Uh, it just has some attributes and it has some calculations we're doing on those attributes. So the prompts will all remain in this, in this class called driver. Now the question is, how do we send the data from driver over to vehicle? Well, what we need to do is we need to say, uh, create a variable of type vehicle. So remember our other class here, our other file is called vehicle. So let's say vehicle and then my vehicle equals new vehicle. Open and close uh, parens and then terminate with the semicolon. Okay, what are we doing here? Let me break this into a couple lines and then I'll take it back to where we started. So if we take a look at line number 30, we've seen things similar to this before. Things like string miles per gallon, things like int mpg. So we start with a type and then a name. What's the type? The type is this vehicle.java, this class that I've made over here where vehicle.java is, is a kind of a, 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 comp a, a composition. It's made of three distinct attributes. So when we talk about a vehicle, we're talking about three variables that could have any kind of value in them, but they're all put together in one envelope called vehicle. Now on the other side, remember what the equal sign means. It means perform the action on the right, take the result, and assign it to what you see on the left. So new vehicle is what we call creating an object. A lot more to come on that in a future lecture, but what we're doing is we're essentially creating a car and then we can specify our attributes on that car. Okay, so now let's say print the current state of the vehicle. Okay, uh, remember that my vehicle, uh, remember that this class called vehicle has a method called toString. Okay, and if I want to invoke the method called toString, I have to precede it with the variable myVehicle. Now, why is that? Because before, when we were in the method main, we could call promptUser just by calling promptUser. Well, that's because promptUser is within the class called driver, but the toString method is not within the class called driver. Remember that guy? We just made him a few moments ago. The toString method is within a class called vehicle. So if we're going to invoke the method called toString, we have to invoke it on a variable, just like you see here, where the variable is a variable of type vehicle. So my vehicle toString is going to return to us a string, and we'll say string dashboard equals my vehicle toString, and then we can simply say system out print line, and we can say uh, dashboard. And that will print out whatever the current value of the vehicle is. We can do this in two lines. We can also consolidate it down to one line. Before I push and commit this, I probably will consolidate it down to one line just to make it a little bit uh, neater, uh, neater. Okay, so next thing, we need our gallons of gas. So let's see, do we have gallons of gas? Looks like we're hard coding gallons of gas to 10. That's not gonna serve us very well. So let's go ahead and prompt for it. So prompt user. Now, do you remember that JOption pane shortcut we made in a previous video? It's about to help us out. Note I type JOP and I hit tab and I get JOption pane show input dialog. And I'll say enter <coughs> gallons 
of gas and terminate with a semicolon. Okay, now we need to assign this to a string. So we'll say string str gallons of gas equals joptionpane.show input dialog, just like so. And we're getting a lot closer here. Uh, now we just need to, whoops, convert the string return to a double. And we'll say double dot parse double str gallons of gas terminate with a semicolon and then we can assign this to a new variable double dbl gallons of gas okay double dbl gallons of gas there we go okay now how do we take this gallons of gas and pass it from our class called driver to our class called vehicle well, remember, remember how we invoked that two string method just a moment ago. Remember, we called this two string method. We had to invoke it by referencing a variable where that variable is a variable of type vehicle. So let's do that one more time. The same variable. We're going to say uh, my vehicle. And then we'll say dot set gallons of gas and then DBL gallons of gas. Whoops just like so. Okay, looking pretty good. This is a good time to kind of stop and, and run it in the debugger and just see how things are working uh, before we get too far. So I go ahead, snap a breakpoint, I save, and then let me debug this. And we'll just take a quick look to make sure everything looks good so far. So debug, uh, debug file, there we go. Note the Pepto-Bismol line turns green. Now I want to point you to this uh, variables view here. Watch what happens after our declaration and assignment on line 30. I choose F8 and you see that in our variables tab we now have a variable named my vehicle of type vehicle. Watch what happens when I press the plus here. Do you see it has, I told you it's kind of a composition of gallons of gas, miles per gallon, and odometer. And sure enough, you see it's subcomponents here, and they're all initialized to zero. So we choose F8, we choose F8, we let this go ahead and print out. And now we prompt the user for gallons of gas. Remember, there's a little trick with this in NetBeans, where the very first prompt tends to hide, tends to lose focus. So uh, we have to go down and we have to kind of hide it, or we have to Alt-Tab and find it. Gallons of gas, let's say 12, and then choose OK. You'll see here in the variables tab, there's our string for gallons of gas, and there's the number 12. Now we're going to convert it from a string to a number, a double, and you see double gallons of gas is 12.0. Now, watch very closely here. Do you see my vehicle set gall gallons of gas? Notice that the driver tab is currently highlighted. The vehicle tab is not. Now let me go to debug step into. Remember in a previous video I talked about the difference between step over and step into. Step over means execute this line and just move to the next. Step into means if I'm on a method call, which we do have here, set gallons of gas, I'm going to control click, it will actually step into that method call and we get to see what happens. So a couple things I want to draw your attention to before I press F7. Notice the driver tab is currently highlighted. Also notice on my vehicle, the gallons of gas right now before executing this line is zero. Let's watch what happens when I press F7. When I press F7, the vehicle tab lights up. And now we're taking this gallons of gas, which we're receiving as a parameter, and we're saving it into an attribute. If you don't remember making this method, we did actually make it, but it was made uh, when we encapsulated fields, so it was actually generated for us. So let me go ahead and choose F8. F8 one more time takes us back to driver. Back in driver now and take a look. Do you see my vehicle gallons of gas is now 12? So you see we're using my vehicle kind of as a collection of all of the attributes and all of the computations that a vehicle will need to do. Okay, and we continue on. As long as you're okay with that concept, uh, the, the rest will just kind of fall through as boilerplate. We simply need to do the same thing to the other methods here. So we see that, okay, the program still does work. The program still does execute. Let's keep refactoring. A little bit more to go. So next, we'll deal with the miles per gallon. This one will be pretty easy. Just to make things consistent, I'm going to change this prompt to enter miles per gallon. We'll keep lowercase to miles per gallon. Okay, and then uh, int 
strength, let's see, strength, and again, I'm gonna go for consistency here. Uh, so I'm going to call this STR miles per gallon, just as we did STR gallons of gas up above. And um, for the integer, I'm going to call that int miles per gallon. So again, just keeping things consistent, nothing else. Int miles per gallon, just like so. And now what we can do is we can say, whoops, see I need to be consistent all around, don't I? STR miles per gallon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my vehicle that's set miles per gallon and pass in INT, whoop, it was already there, miles per gallon. Okay, just a couple more. We want to handle the distance we're going to go. All right, sorry, first let's do the odometer. So remember our, our trick for J option pane, JOP tab, the shortcut we did in a previous video, J option pane show input dialog. I told you that'd save a lot of time. Enter odometer. And then we're going to save this into, uh, let's say final string odometer, or STR odometer. The final keyword there, not absolutely necessary in our case. It just means that this variable cannot have its value changed after it, after it's first assigned. Some people consider a good practice to make everything final. If you don't know what the final keyword we, means, just don't worry about it. I, feel free to leave it off. Final int int odometer equals uh, integer dot parse int str odometer. Remember there's a difference in data types which is how we interpret the zeros and ones that are in the computer's memory. Do we interpret it as a number? Do we interpret it as a string? That's why we have to prompt, and we're going to get everything as a string when we prompt, then we convert it to a data type that um, is more number friendly. Okay, so uh, now we say my vehicle dot set odometer, int odometer. Okay, and we end up with the red line here, and the red line says, cannot find symbol. This question comes up a lot in introductory programming. What does cannot find symbol mean? Well, I never made a method called set odometer on the class called vehicle. And you see what the compiler is doing here is it sees that I'm trying to call a method called set odometer on this variable called my vehicle. It looks at my vehicle, it sees my vehicle is a variable of type vehicle. I can control click to look at vehicle just like so. It goes in here and it says, wait a minute, I don't understand. You're trying to call a method called set odometer, yet no method called set odometer exists. No problem, we can make it. I simply right click and I refactor and we'll go to encapsulate field. There we go, encapsulate fields just like so. And I tick the get odometer, set odometer box. Remember a few minutes ago when we F7'd into uh, set gallons of gas and I talked about some generated methods? That's exactly what we're doing here. We're simply generating the get and set odometer methods that you see down here towards the bottom. Now, typically, it's not mandatory, but a lot of times two string happens to be the last method. Um, the order of methods doesn't really matter. It's more a matter of neatness. So, okay, so we have our odometer. Now I, I navigate back to driver and notice that the set odometer is no longer redlining because it has found um, it, it has found that method because I just made that method. If I want to verify, note I can hold down control, mouse over, I get a little hand, I click, and I see that set odometer method that was just created. Okay, then navigate, go to type, control O, uh, driver, type in driver, and that will take us right back to the driver class again. Okay, so we have uh, we have odometer. Uh, next thing that we need, I'm going again. I'm just going to keep these prompts consistent. I'll start them with the word enter. So enter distance to travel. Okay, and we will call this one str distance traveled. And that looks good. And we'll go ahead. And we'll make that final as well. Again, if you don't know what final is, don't worry about it. And uh, final end, we'll say str distance traveled. Okay, just like so. Okay, print the current state of the vehicle. Oop, what does it not like there? I didn't spell it right, final. Print the uh, current state of the vehicle. 
Uh, for that, you know what? We can just duplicate what we have above. In other words, what we're doing here is we're looking at the dashboard. We're then inputting the gallons of gas, the miles per gallon, the odometer. We are taking a trip, and then we're printing the dashboard one more time. Okay, but we, we did kind of miss something, didn't we? We actually have to move the vehicle. So let's say move the vehicle. Okay, and for this we say uh, my vehicle dot go. Remember that go method we made, and we have to pass in a distance. Golly, look at that. There's our distance, just like so. Again, to keep things consistent, I'm going to name that int distance, and down here, int distance, just like so. Um, also, just for S and Gs, let me go ahead and, and just to confirm that everything works as we expect, I'm going to go ahead and print the dashboard of the vehicle uh, at the very top of the method after we do all of our prompts, but before we go a distance, and then one more time after we go that distance. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with how the, uh, how the program is looking. So I'm going to uh, take us back to windowed mode here and uh, just a couple of adjustments here, show only editor, there we go. And first, I'm simply going to run the file so we can see it go in full speed. And then I'm going to slow down and debug the file uh, so that we can watch it at our own pace. But first, let's get the satisfaction of running at full speed. Okay, so notice the first state of the vehicle, gallons of gas is zero and odometer is zero because we have not given it any values yet. Let's make gallons of gas 12, try something a little bit different. Miles per gallon, let's make it 20. Odometer, we'll say 10,000. Distance to travel, we'll say 100. Now think about those numbers. 100 divided by 20 is 5. We're starting with 12 gallons of gas, so we should have 12 gallons of gas and 10,000 miles on the odometer when we start. When we end, we should have 12,100 miles on the odometer and 7 gallons of gas. So let's confirm that that's the output. Look down here in the output. That's where these system out print lines are going when we invoke system out print. So there we go. Sure enough, after we've entered our values, gallons of gas is 12, odometer is 10,000. After we've taken a trip, gallons of gas is 7, odometer is 10,100. I think I might have said 12,000 earlier, but I meant 10,000. You see, while we're now dealing with logic in two different files, it makes a lot more sense because we know all of the prompting is going to be in this class called driver, and all of the movement, uh, all of the computations are going to be in the class called vehicle. So let's slow down a bit and look at this in the debugger. I go to driver, I right click, and I say um, debug file, just like so. It's going to stop at our breakpoint. I'll keep the variables tab lit up so we can look at that. So I F8. Okay, so we, we print out. I'll just go quickly out to output. We print our current state before we have any data. We see gallons of gas zero, odometer zero. Okay, I choose F8. And we get our prompt. We know that very first prompt is a little bit tricky. A little alt tab magic to, magic to bring it up. Gallons of gas, let's go with a different number this time. Let's say 14 gallons of gas. Okay, uh, now you see gallons of gas is the string 14 because it's surrounded with quotes. Let's go ahead and parse that to a double. Now we get the raw number 14.0. Now uh, we are taking this value, we're passing it to my vehicle. So F7, there's our gallons of gas assignment. Notice we're in the vehicle class. F8 takes us back. Okay, enter miles per gallon. This time, let's say 25. Okay, again, we take that value and we're going to set that into my vehicle. I'll expand my vehicle so we can see when I invoke my vehicle dot set, dot set miles per gallon, we can see that number 25 now goes over into my vehicle. Enter odometer, let's say 20,000 this time. Okay, we parse that to an int and watch this number right here where my mouse is. We'll see that we pass that into my vehicle and there goes 20,000. How far do we want to travel? Uh, we have 25 miles per gallon, let's say 200 miles. So that's going to be about eight gallons of gas all told. So we parse that from a string to a number. Uh, and then we print out the current value of our vehicle. Now the important part, F8 takes us down to this go method. Let me go ahead and press F7 and watch this one very carefully again, because we're going from driver to vehicle. So I choose F7. And take a look, here's that go method that we made recently. Now what's distance? Distance is 200, miles per gallon is 25, 
200 divided by 25 should give us a gallons consumed of 8. F8, and what do we get in gallons consumed? You see above my mouse the value 8. You can also see it in the debugger tab down here. So set gallons of gas to the present value of gallons of gas less 8 gallons. And what does that leave us with? Um, leaves us with 6 gallons because we started with 14. Now set the odometer. It did a little refactoring here on my behalf. I'll likely change that back. But nonetheless, let's see if I expand on the keyword this. What does the odometer say? Currently it says 20,000. Let's see what happens as soon as I execute this line. It goes to 20,200. F8 again takes us back now to our original driver class. And we'll go to output and we'll choose F9 or we'll choose F8, either one. And we will see the updated dashboard after making our journey. Our, we have six gallons of gas and 20,200 miles on the odometer. So this is a much cleaner program. And right now we only have my vehicle, but you can kind of imagine where we're going to go next. You can make another variable called your vehicle. And think about this, uh, new vehicle. I'll delete this line. Uh, I'll delete this line in just a moment, but you see how we can actually start making other variables now. And uh, you can see how we can separate the values that belong in one variable versus the values that belong in another variable. In other words, when you go to the gas station, you fill up your car. Does it affect my gas tank or yours? It should only affect yours, right? So making different variables will allow us to keep separated the gas that you have purchased and consumed versus the gas that I have purchased and consumed. And that's where we're going to go in a future set of videos. So I'm going to commit and push. Hope this has been helpful. See you in the next video. Thank you.